And uh, I guess my role here is to provide a little bit of an overview, uh, you know, how the province fits in this and perhaps the, the provincial framework. So I will try to be succinct in my uh, presentation. Um, I guess I, just to let you know, I, I work with the Ministry of Community Development. Uh, I work in the Infrastructure and Finance Division. Uh, so we're responsible for basically local government finance and infrastructure. One of the, the key roles is uh, developing and administrating a lot of the uh, funding programs, the capital funding programs that are available to local governments. Um, and I will speak a little bit about uh, how that is integrated in what we're talking about today. So just quickly, I, you know, uh, talk work in strategic direction. You know, as Eric alluded to, uh, you know, we're responsible for legislation. Uh, we also have developed some plans and strategies as well. I mean, I, I think the key point with legislation is that legislation identifies the minimum standard um, and, uh, uh, and ultimately the minimum uh, acceptable service level for a lot of the infrastructure we provide. Uh, it doesn't really speak to moving forward um, and uh, you know, that is probably a shortcoming of a lot of the legislation we yeah. have. However, we do have uh, provincial plans and strategies and those are the opportunity to provide a, perhaps a, a much broader, holistic and integrated approach with some of the challenges that we face. Um, you know, I, I guess the, the key here though is, you know, without uh, sort of leadership and champions and a vision at a community level, uh, both of these are, are merely words on a piece of paper. Um, so it, it really boils down to having the ground, on, on the ground uh, leadership to see that these things are, are successful. So I, I'm sure everyone here is uh, well aware of the legislation that uh, uh, I guess governs water. I mean we're, we're specifically talking about water today. Um, you know the BC approach has been less to focus on legislation and more to focus on education. Um, if we look to our, you know, our neighbors in the south, you know, I think uh, we often look at uh, U.S. as having much stronger legislation when it comes to environmental protection. Um, but uh, the legislation without enforcement, uh, once again, it becomes words on paper. And uh, I think we've uh, seen that we've actually had greater successes, uh, you know, working through education uh, and outreach and, uh, and to get the actual, or meet the challenges that we face with some of our, our, our environmental uh, problems. So, um, just a couple of examples, the Climate Action Plan, of course I talked about we, did, we don't go li with legislation and I've identified the legislative targets, but uh, I mean, th this plan does identify uh, <coughs> some of the targets that we're after, and it certainly then influences how we actually build our environment around us when it comes to infrastructure. Um, Living Water Smart. Obviously some of the actions here are, are going to influence or should influence how we look at water as a resource and how we interact with water. Um, I mentioned that you know I'm going to talk a little bit about how these things are integrated into the programs that I deal with. You know the, the fact that water use in BC will be 33 percent more efficient, and 50 percent the new municipal water needs will be acquired through conservation are are pretty strong statements in uh, in uh, the work I do. Uh, same with uh, some of the other ones when it comes to community development strategies will be developed to recognize the importance of riparian zones in an adapt and adapting to climate change. So I think, um, you know, identifying partnerships, tools, and resources is the fact that we've got the legislation, uh, you know, we've got some of these plans and strategies, and, uh, you know, some of the roles that, uh, you know, should be placed on the province is to help uh, build some of the capacity needed to meet some of these challenges. So meet the legislation, meet the uh, plans and the strategies. And here's just an example of a few of them. Um, I guess I just wanted to identify 
we've actually got one more um, that was, uh, I actually don't have a hard copy of it, I just got the uh, front page of it. But it, it was uh, developed and released at UBCM uh, in September. It's a guide to green choices, uh, ideas and practical advice for land use decisions in British Columbia. There's a couple of chapters within it. One uh, talks about uh, valued natural features, or sorry, valued natural features need protection. And another one about settlements must be integrated with nature. And it's uh, available, I believe, on our website. Is that correct? We'll put the link up there yeah. for everybody. <laughs> it is actually, I think it's on the BC Climate to Action Toolkit as well. So some of the partnerships and tools and resources that we're involved with, um, you know, I think Eric talked about partnerships and, and we certainly feel that that's key uh, to moving forward. Uh, small Community Infrastructure Sustainability website. Uh, that's actually part and parcel with the water bucket, which was a BCWWA initiative, but certainly included all three levels of government uh, and industry. Uh, water Conservation Calculator and Toolkit is actually a, a project that we're working uh, with uh, POLIS. And uh, happy to finally uh, start uh, working together with POLIS. Um, Local Government Asset Management Working Group, that's another uh, initiative that uh, sort of takes uh, from some of the, the work that needs to be done for that PSAP 3150 on the accounting principles and look at how we manage our assets over time sustainably. Smart Planning Initiative, uh, that's uh, <coughs> more high level planning, uh, you know, speaks to the, the guide for green choices. Uh, presentations and seminars, Things like what we're here today for, CAVI, um, and, and, and it all boils down to conversations. It's all about communications and talking to people. So I did say I was going to talk a little bit about how uh, my actual uh, day job uh, fits into this. Uh, as I said, you know, we deal with the uh, funding programs, and usually what we're trying to do is is integrate some of the legislation, some of the strategies, and clearly some of the, the tools and resources that we're building back into the program. And we, and we integrate through basically three different areas. Uh, eligibility requirements to be uh, eligible for a grant, how we actually evaluate some of the projects, and the conditionality of the contracts. So what we're, we're asking uh, local governments to do if they are successful. And what we try to do over time is basically incrementally raise the bar. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I like to think we have been successful. Some people may argue that. So within the grant program, some of the goals and objectives, you know, quite similar to what we're talking about today. Uh, you know, looking at principles of sustainability, you know, integrated holistic approaches, thinking outside the box, um, and make sure we're, we're, we're understanding uh, how we manage resources. And that's all resources, natural resources, human resources, financial resources. And, and I put this up because I, I think um, within our grant programs, you know, we were critical of, of how we, uh, uh, I guess, uh, implemented our grant programs was that, uh, you know, many people would probably argue that we, we reward poor behavior. And, uh, you know, since, uh, uh, you know, er Eric really initiated the changes in how we dealt with our grant programs when he was uh, with the Ministry of, at that time, Municipal Affairs, and then we've changed our name four times, but, um, <laughs> Uh, it, it, it's looking at making a change, change my Albert Einstein quote from this one to the other one. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, first, you know, you've got to understand that it's sort of a, it's a shared responsibility and shared accountability. So, I mean, it's not placed on, on any one person, but it's placed on everybody. You know, whether it's senior government, local government, or the individual. And, and I think it, it re really boils down to, uh, yeah. values and, and what we value and ensuring that uh, you know our value system is integrated in, in the decision-making processes that we do and our day-to-day 